Dr. Mandel here with you. Hope you're having a pleasant day. Uh, let me go ahead and just say a few things about what we're going to be doing today. I think that you will enjoy this program. Um, let's go ahead and briefly just put the disclaimer up for you so you can understand a little bit. Uh, briefly, most important is that we are not making uh, diagnosis for anyone. We are strictly here for education. We want you to know that. And what I'm about to share with you today is going to really be fascinating information. I'm going to kind of move through it quick. It's about serapeptase. Serapeptase is a digestive enzyme. We are broadcasting live via the streaming through YouTube. Uh, chat rooms are going to be opened up as notifications are going out. Let's talk a little bit about this amazing uh, proteolytic enzyme right here, right in front of me here. And I'm going to go ahead and talk about it more about the end of the program to show you a little bit uh, what is happening here. But uh, people out there, <clears throat> you are really going to get some great ed education. Uh, this is something that's fascinating. Let's go ahead and move on a little bit to our first picture here. Uh, this is called the old serapeptase. Now you're saying, well, what is that? Now it kind of looks like a silkworm and a butterfly. And yes, you are correct about that. But um, let's go ahead and talk about this for a second. Uh, serapeptase has been used for several decades, mainly throughout Europe and Asia, as an anti-inflammatory agent. The effectiveness of this particular enzyme is tremendous, from inflammation to heart disease, to removing fibrous cysts from breasts, from reducing arthritis, reducing pain, reducing mucus, uh, and the list goes on and on, which we'll go through a lot of these, uh, and I am sure that you will gain a lot of education. Uh, this is a super enzyme, and I'll tell you a little bit how to use it a little later, how, to, how it works, but the theory is that these enzymes were extracted from a bacteria capable of dissolving these dead tissues without having any harmful effects on the organisms, particularly on any of the healthy cells. Uh, the serapeptase that we're going to be talking about makes it, pos makes it possible for the insect, as you see the insect, to leave the silk cocoon after it has transformed into the moth by breaking down proteins contained within that cocoon. So that cocoon that was in there, that that moth came out from the inside of that silkworm that had this particular super enzyme, this actually dissolved the outside of that cocoon so the butterfly could make it, makes its way out of that cocoon to fly. Now, obviously, today we're not using uh, what's in the silkworm. Uh, today, it's a little different on how they produce this enzyme. So I want to let you know that there is nothing to worry about. This is all done in laboratories, and obviously, they're doing this through fermentation. So this is quite interesting. Uh, serapeptase has other names, but generally what we're concerned about here is that we want to do things to break down fibrin. Now, fibrin is very, very important. Fibrin, let's go to fibrin over here. Uh, let's move over here. So I'm going to kind of move around today. Uh, so let's go back to fibrin. And if we look at fibrin here, fibrin is basically, uh, <clears throat> we need fibrin. Fibrin is what uh, does the old clotting. Uh, if you have too much fibrin in there, it can cause problems. It works along with the red blood cells. Uh, it's an important protein in the blood, mainly for blood coagulation. So this coagulates bloods. So if we have too much coagulation in certain areas, it can clog arteries as well, which we'll go into that in just a second. So understand that our purpose here is for this particular enzyme to make its way through the body once it reaches the small intestine to get to the bloodstream to look for excessive fibrin. Excessive fibrin, the excessive proteins that are not part of the body, and it recognizes these particular uh, fibrotic tissues that cause pain and problems in our body and clogging within the arteries and it starts to uncoagulate them. It starts to break it down naturally. So it's quite amazing. Uh, also, uh, it does amazing things in the, in the what we call bradykinin. Let's go over here to bradykinin. And uh, I'm kind of skipping around here. If I can find this for me, just bear with me, please. 
Uh, there's Brady Kynan, and it kind of looks kind of foreign to you like it does to me. But Brady Kynan is important to understand. This is a protein that's responsible for triggering pain response. So when we hurt ourselves, Brady Kynan is always there. Now, the purpose of this serapeptase is to alleviate. It's important to understand because all inflammation has to do with bradykinin. This is what makes the nerves that become inflamed. This is what makes the tissue sensitive. This is what makes us more hypersensitive to the heat and light when we touch something, the general soreness. So as we reduce these uh, bradykinins, we are preventing and inhibiting uh, those bradykinins, which we are going to have less pain, less soreness. And this is a tremendous thing what serapeptase promises to do. Okay, so that is an important thing uh, I wanted to bring out. Understand as we go here, I'm going to take you back over here. We look at this good old arthritis. Everyone has arthritis to some degree when we get older. There's no question. We cannot escape arthritis. Well, what is arthritis? Arthritis is degeneration or inflammation that takes place in the joint. Usually you can get bone on bone, particularly in like knee problems, hip problems. So when you hear about the hip replacements, the knee replacements, all has to do with arthritis, primarily osteoarthritis, where two main kinds is osteoarthritis, which is the wear and tear, the degeneration, the poor posture, the overweight, the joint, bone on bone. And we have rheumatoid arthritis, which is much uh, rarer. This is an autoimmune disease where we get inflammation from an autoimmune reaction, but the majority of arthritis is osteoarthritis. I want people to understand what that is all about. So let's move over to uh, muscle inflammation. If you look at uh, when muscles become inflamed, what happens? You get irritation. Nerves have to supply muscles. And uh, this serapeptase reduces inflammation. It's, it's fascinating. It reduces significant inflammation. Uh, not only in muscles, but we'll talk about uh, in the joints, as we mentioned, and also in the discs. And everywhere else, there are nerves that are particularly causing your pain. So in other words, people who have been on non anti-inflammatories, naproxen, uh, 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 ibuprofens, as well as even aspirin, um, you are potentially causing uh, tearing up the gastrointestinal system, causing problems potentially in the liver or kidneys. Kidneys more from ibuprofen, liver more from uh, uh, acetaminophen. Uh, so you need to be very careful. Yeah, if you take something periodically, yeah, you're going to be okay. But if you're doing something every day and a part of your life, you are potentially leading to a source that can give you lots of problems. So uh, when we look at muscle inflammation, uh, that is something that most of us have from uh, poor posture, forward head posture, uh, being overweight, maybe having our old injuries, doing accumulative trauma dis disorders, uh, maybe the kind of work that you do, laborious work all day long, muscles start to get tight. Well, this serapeptase can reduce that in inflammation. So that takes us here to herniated discs. Uh, as you see that inflammation there from a herniated disc, which a lot of my uh, listeners have, bulging discs, herniated discs, disc degeneration, this serapeptase is wonderful uh, in reducing the swelling, reducing the tissue damage. Uh, it reduces the uh, cyclooxygenase as well as the prostaglandins, which are the, the, the enzymes that form in those areas. And what this does, it inhibits these particular prostaglandins from reducing the inflammation. Uh, this is excellent, particularly people who are taking corticosteroids uh, or any anti-inflammatory medication to hopefully get off those drugs. Uh, this is a wonderful thing. It's safe. There are no side effects in the sense of that. I would tell people out there that if you're on other kinds of meds, speak to your doctor about this. You can do the research on serapeptase. And remember, this is an alternative way to help your body not only break down fibrogen, uh, fibrin, uh, but all these other excessive proteins that are building up in your body. Uh, you'll be amazed what this thing can do. Uh, let's go on to my next thing here I want to mention for our females, the old breast, the fibrocystic breasts. Um, very, very common by the millions worldwide. Tenderness. Cysts start to develop. We realize that as we go through menopause or as we have changes in our hormonal cycle, 
uh, we start to develop lumps, maybe from your diet, from soy or other things you're eating, you start to develop these lumps, these little masses. You take your mammographies and they say, wow, you got these, these, these cysts and we want to monitor them. Well, guess what? Seropeptase will find those. And seropeptase can go in there and it can eat up those cysts because this is dead protein that's sitting around. And obviously, hopefully it will reduce the swelling, reduce the pain, and actually alleviate your particular condition. Several studies, hundreds and hundreds of studies out there that talk about this. You could do research on it. My job is to bring you uh, the cutting edge so you can have hope that you can do things naturally. Uh, what about mucus? Uh, people who have like respiratory conditions, mucus in the sinuses. If you notice here, on this one here, this particular uh, formulation, I'll go over it with you here because these are the capsules. As you can see, these have capsules. Some have enteric coating on it um, that are tablets or tablets. Uh, but this says help support healthy sinuses and along helps break down unwanted proteins. So it says right on the bottle, and I'll go over that with you in just a few minutes. I just want to throw that out at you. So let's look at the mucus inflammation here. Uh, I'm sorry. Here's mucus. Uh, it happens in particularly in your sinuses, in your lungs. Uh, this actually uh, helps break down the neutrophils. Uh, and obviously, as more neutrophils start to show up, you start getting more thickness in the mucus. We get in our cough and our, and our respiratory system uh, and our sinuses that can lead to inner ear problems, tinnitus, uh, vertigo. It affect, can affect the eustachian tubes, particularly if it's in the uh, back in the, the pharynx region. Well, actually, this helps impede the production of mucus. So if you get that, if you are one who even who has allergies and you get this thickened mucus, this therapeptase may be the miracle for you. All right. So uh, that is something I want you to keep in mind. Let's go to somewhere very important. And we look at cardiovascular health, uh, heart attacks. Well, what is a heart attack? Excessive fiber, inflammation and cholesterol that forms in the, in the coronary arteries that affect the heart. So obviously we have this extra fibrin, but this serapeptase finds this dead tissue because fibrin, that excess fibrin is dead. It's protein. We want to dissolve it. So how can we do that? Uh, that's how this works. Now, if you look over here at cardiovascular, you can see like uh, when it comes to angina, a uh, lack of oxygen, this is, or this is actually towards coronary artery, but angina would be similar, but towards coronary artery, obviously more uh, serious. Uh, here, look here, the cardiovascular here, you can see the excessive atherosclerosis. Well, what is that? That's plaque. Okay, that's clotting. That's dead tissue. The purpose of this serapeptase is like little Pac-Mans. It works its way into the system to help dissolve this. Okay, uh, and it can. All right, so I wanted to bring those very important things out. Uh, one, we talk about, we mentioned uh, uh, muscle inflammation reduces inflammation mucus buildup uh, breast engorgement of fibroids or fibrocystic uh, things that take place within the breast chronic inflammation remember that all diseases are tied in inflammation if we reduce inflammation we are helping the body stay healthy uh, arthritis disc degeneration uh, uh, herniated discs heart health even for post-operative swelling can help reduce the swelling naturally uh, this is a fascinating thing. Now let's go into the, the edge, the edge, the cutting edge here of the old serapeptase here. Let's take this off. Uh, let's go on to, uh, take that off and let's go on to my little guys right here. You're going to want to see these. I know you've been waiting for this. So we say this for the end. Okay. These are the different companies. If you look at it, they generally run in 20 SPUs or IUs similar. They are the same. Uh, here is the most important information you need to understand. Now, I take 120 SPU. I'm taking that one on the bottom right. You can take, I'll have another one in the middle, which is 250,000 IUs, which is instead of the 120,000, it is doubled, a little more than doubled. Uh, you might want to start taking the 40,000 or the 60,000 at first. Uh, you can look at them. The difference between the SPUs and the SUs is the strength. Although I don't recommend people to jump up the highest if you've never taken it. You may want to take, maybe start out at 40 or 60. And you can actually double up if you start seeing that it's okay with you. But here is the most important thing. You need to take it on an empty stomach first thing in the morning. 
at least a half hour before you eat or a couple hours after you eat. Uh, remember that most of these products are all enteric coated or specially preserved in a certain way where it's not going to break open within the acid in your stomach. When acid hits this, they're no longer, it's no longer going to take effect. Now you're asking me a question. I could already hear a lot of people asking, uh, yes, good for scars, but you're asking me something. What if I take it with food? Well, it's going to start working on the proteins and the food. And that's what you don't want. And the purpose of taking it first thing in the morning is that the acid is obviously the not, not the most acidic, which is good, makes its way through. But uh, most of these uh, conditions, they have what they call ser serotonic coating or something within the capsule or the coating, uh, enteric coating on the capsule. So it doesn't start to open up in the stomach where the acid is present. But remember, first thing in the morning, your acid is not the highest. It's highest while you're eating or after you're eating. That's when your body really secretes more acidity, gastric acid. So I really hope this will really help you. Um, I'm excited for you because there's a lot of people out there that, you know, you can get off your, your, your chronic uh, inflammatories that you're taking or chronic uh, medicines that you're taking. But please speak to your doctor. Uh, I cannot recommend for each particular case what you should and should not do without having a history of you. I wish I can help everyone out there, but this is cutting edge material. And I really hope that, you know, you can go to Amazon, you can look, you can Google it, serapeptase. Uh, they do come in different proteolytic enzymes with different combinations. I like the plain serapeptase. Okay. I found it to be very effective for hundreds of my patients, hundreds, hundreds. So uh, anyways, um, for cysts, yes, great for cysts, dead, back, uh, dead protein in your body, things that are forming in muscles and soft tissue. It knows to find out where that dead protein is. That's the miraculous thing about this. Anyways, this will be posted up on my channel. I ask you to check out my channel, uh, uh, Motivational Doc. I really think that that will give you a lot of good insight. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. Check out the great self-help videos I have, hundreds, particularly to uh, forward head posture, poor posture, spinal related conditions, knee, shoulder, hip. Um, I am a chiropractor. This is my field. This is where I focus in as well as nutrition. And uh, we've been really putting a whole lot of great stuff on nutrition. It's been helping hundreds of thousands of people. I mean, I can't believe the, the influx of emails I'm getting. But uh, the best way for me to respond back to you is check out my Facebook, Motivational Doc on Facebook. Uh, those questions I seem to get much faster because I search for those. The problem with YouTube is that all the thousands of questions I get and comments down there, they're not all sent to me. And I have, a, you know, well over a thousand videos on here and there's no way I can go to each video and check those out. But most important, take the education, leave your comments below. I'm sure you'll get thousands of people that will respond to you and help you and help me. Uh, we're here as one big family. I appreciate you chatters being out there. Much love to all of you. I really respect that. And I wish everyone out there lots of blessings for you and your family, good health, and we'll continue to bring great information for you. Share these videos. You don't have to ask me. Put them on your social media and let's just reach out and try to help as many people as we can. Okay. We'll catch up with you later. And uh, again, God bless. Bye-bye now.